Hello dear pupils, on my daily walk to work I see buildings of all kinds, so buildings everywhere. Welcome to a new English lesson where we will speak about buildings, especially houses around us. A man's house is his castle, said Edward Coke, who was an English barista or lawyer, judge and politician who is considered to be the greatest jurist of the Elizabethan era. Here is what else we will do at this lesson. We will learn rhymes about houses. We will review the types of houses. Learn conversational formulas when visiting people. We will learn new words related to houses and we will identify differences and similarities between houses in the USA and the UK. So we will begin with the pronunciation and we will try to read as quickly as we can. This is a rhyme, a tongue twister, that contains the words that we may find in a house. There is a house on the square, on the square there is a flat, in the flat there is a room, in the room there is a table, on the table there is a cage, in the cage there is a parrot, and the parrot is singing, parrot in the cage, cage on the table, table in the flat, flat in the room, room in the house, house on the square, that is the key of the house. And the next one is the following, let's see some of the new words. Okay, here we have the word uh, brick, karamida, uh, drawbridge, a drawbridge is a pod basculant, a keep, shansku apa, and arches, arkor, and the last word pip is a te uita pe furish atrage cu ochiul. Okay, I'll try to read this. Uh, a rhyme and dark twister in the same time for you. William the Conqueror 1066, I know what I'll build after tea with my bricks. I'll build a great castle with drawbridge and cape, and arches through which I shall see when I peep. Saxon and Norman both up to their tricks. William the Conqueror 1066. We continue our topic with conversational formulas, where I invite you to learn some basics when talking about visiting people. So, use visit. It is the simplest and the most obvious way we can talk about visiting someone. Like in this example, I visited my sister. So, remember, don't use any preposition after visit. Don't say, for example, I visited to my sister or I visited with my sister. Okay, so the solution is simple and clean, but it's a little on the formal side. So visit for formal situations. So when we want to be less formal, more natural and more relaxed, we will use the apostrophe, the wonderful apostrophe. So there are two ways. The first way is quite simple. I went to Alexa's house yesterday. She loves pink stuff. We use Alexa's house. Remember, don't use Alexa's home. Instead, we can shorten this sentence to I went to Alexa's house. So, remember, we would still say house in the sentence even if Alexa lives in a flat or a lighthouse or a cave or on a boat. Quite simple, right? But we can simplify things by removing the word house. Like, I went to Alexa's yesterday. She loves art. So that means that you have a few options. I visited, I went to Alexa's house, or I went to Alexa's. Let's move to situations when someone is visiting me. How do I say that? We 
use the same visit like in the first example and we say my sister visited me but there is an extra phrase to use and that extra phrase is come round or come over that simply means come to my house why don't you come round tonight we can watch the new bond film and in this sentence it means that why don't you come to my house the next one is even shorter we can say to mine to make it clearer we can say just to mine like in this example don't go out it's too expensive come round to mine meaning come round to my house we can also say have someone over or have someone round let's see the example i had 17 people around for christmas i made a fantastic potato dish it means that i had 70 people at my house so let's discuss imagine you are in the city look at the buildings around let's name the types of buildings what can we see first we can see houses block of flats we see shops cafes bookshops hospitals police stations we may see shopping centers department stores museums theaters cinemas skyscrapers palaces and hotels of course we know the destination of these buildings houses are made to live in bookshops are made to sell books to people to customers we go to shopping centers to buy different stuff and we go to hospitals when we feel sick okay let's go to the next question say in what buildings you would expect to find the following rooms so where can we find a reading room in a public library or sometimes in the airport a waiting room in a railway station a laboratory in a university or in a school a gym hall in a fitness club for example a changing room in a sports center or in a theater a canteen may be found in a factory or in an office a playroom in a shopping center or in the houses a man's house is his castle said edward coke so our home is the best place for us the only place where we can feel comfortable in and it is the only place where I can feel fully protected. What about you? In what kind of house do you live in? So, you know, no matter the type of house we live in or whether it is a block of flats, an igloo or floating house, the most important is to feel safe and good. So now we will work with the vocabulary. When we speak about houses, we distinguish clay houses. A clay house is produced using wet clay bricks, which are shaped and dried in order to harden. Clay is a kind of earth that is soft when it is wet and hard when it is dry. Concrete house is the house produced using concrete. Concrete is a building material that is made by mixing together cement, sand, small stones and water. Stone house is the house made of stones. A stone is a hard solid mineral substance that is found in the ground, often used for building. A wood house is the house made of wood. A brick house is the house made of bricks. A brick is baked clay used for building walls, houses and other buildings. Cement is the hard substance that is found and formed when cement becomes dry and hard. Staircase, a set of stairs inside a building, including the 
banisters. A banister is a post and bars that are fixed at the side. Stairs, a set of steps built between two floors and inside a building. Railing, a fence made of metal bars that go straight upwards. Landing, the area at the top of a set of stairs where you arrive before you go into an upstairs room or move on to another set of stairs. To whitewash is to cover or whiten with whitewash. To lay the foundations means to create a usually stone or concrete structure that supports a building from underneath. To put in doors and windows, yeah, to put the doors and the windows of a house and to drive or to hammer nails is to use nails when fixing something uh, usually hard. Okay, and now let's practice the vocabulary. We have to fill in the blanks using the words whitewash, clay house, brick houses, foundations, drive, put in and hammer. Pause the video if you need time to understand which words go to the right place and when you are ready, we'll check. So let's see. The first one, I'm thinking of whitewashing the walls. The next one, the builders are now beginning to lay the foundations of the new school. C. Hammer the nail in it if you want to fix the chair. D. How much does it cost to put in all the windows and door for this house? We've decided to build a brick house. It's the safest. And the last sentence. If you live in a clay house, you can expect to stay warm or cool depending on the weather. Well, now, together with you, we will discover about British and American houses according to uh, the text that you will listen. Okay. A lot of families in Great Britain and the USA live in flats. But still, a great number of people live in detached houses. They are usually built of brick and stone. As a matter of fact, British houses are not large, but comfortable. Americans like to live in large houses. Most British as well as American houses are two-storied. The houses are well planned and cozy. As a rule, on the ground floor there is a sitting room, a dining room, a kitchen and a hall. The bedrooms and the bathroom are upstairs. English houses often have two doors, a front door for guests and a back door. Traditionally, the British have a fireplace a symbol of warmth in the house, where they like to sit by fire in winter evenings. In American houses there is a laundry room next to the kitchen, a place in the house where they wash and dry clothes. In addition to all these rooms, they usually have a recreation and workout room in the basement. One cannot imagine a house in Britain and America without lawns, and a flower bed in the front. So now I want you to reflect upon the proverb. Every bird likes its nest. And it's time to sum up. What have we learned today? We have learned rhymes about houses. We have reviewed the types of houses. We have learned conversational formulas when visiting people. We have learned new words related to houses and we have found out about differences and similarities between houses in the USA and the UK. See you next time. Goodbye.